you know, basketball can be a beautiful game. I mean, when it's combined with great execution and a high level of skill, sweet dish underneath. all those factors, I think, captured the imagination of a lot of basketball people. Our goal every, every season is to get to the state tournament and win, especially last year, because we knew we could feel it, we could taste it. There was no selfishness, no one cared who scored what, who got the accolades. We just had a mentality like, we're going to get a stop, we're going to beat you on both ends of the floor. Seeing all the years of hard work and uh, bonding come together as, you know, as one unit, one team, it all worked out in the end. We came to practice every day wanting to get better and win that day, and that's why we can live with what happened. Now reflecting back on it, it's just confirmed what a magical season it was. The Perfect Season, Interrupted, is presented by Grace Church, gospel-focused, Bible-centered, with loving community and committed outreach, in by the Eden Prairie Boys Basketball Association. Since the start of the Minnesota Boys State Basketball Tournament in 1913, 35 teams have gone wire to wire without a loss. The last team to do it was over a decade ago. I experienced the ultimate perfection in 1987 with my Bloomington Jefferson teammates, an undefeated season capped off with a state championship. In 2020, three schools had the chance to add their names to that list. On the girls' side, Paige Beckers and the Hopkins Royals hadn't lost a game since March of 2018 and hoped to claim back-to-back -back titles. Southwest Minnesota Christian boys had a 29-0 run going themselves. Then there's Eden Prairie, the only team out of the first three looking for its first ever program championship. Some saw the storybook season coming years ago, but could not imagine how it would end. Eden Prairie, white uniforms, red helmets, black pants. When you think of Eden Prairie athletics, Basketball may not be the first sport to cross your mind. Eden Prairie is a football powerhouse, 11 state titles in the last quarter century. When coach Dave Flom took over the program, almost every player spent time on the gridiron in the fall. I give all sorts of credit to how competitive we were because we are multi-sport guys. So because of our experience with our football and winning, it certainly was the foundation to the building of our success. Well, in the last 10 years, I think we were in the state tournament seven times. You know, if I compare this to the 2011 team, that's a team that went, to, the only team from Eden Prairie that's gone to the state championship, lost to Hopkins. Coach Flom grew up in Cannon Falls where his dad, Dennis, was a successful baseball coach. Dennis now heads the ninth grade A basketball team at EP, sharing coaching experiences with his son. Dave started his journey as an assistant at Chaska, then led the Watertown Mayor Program, made a stop at Gustavus as an assistant before arriving in the Southwest Metro. But I've been at this 15 years now with great kids and great teams. We've never had a team like this because it's likely to not happen again. So I moved to uh, Eden Prairie from Washington, D.C. when I was in kindergarten. Um, probably came to every single game all the way up until I started travel. Um, I always wanted to uh, play varsity, so. I grew up watching Grant Schaefer and Soderberg and Moen and those guys playing, and I thought it was like the coolest thing in the world. These guys would be shooting threes. On the bench, I'd be all excited and stuff. I just wanted to be a part of that. We've always been super tight, super close, uh, really good friends, you know, not just on the basketball court, but outside of basketball too, hanging out. Our travel program uh, really travel starts in fifth grade. We had so many a-level players that we split two teams into two equal teams and in fifth grade they took first place and third place so our in the state tournament so our collective group of kids as fifth graders was amazing right so knowing that uh, we've got some really great players uh, coming up just a few years later as sophomores austin andrews connor christensen drake dobbs and john henry were the top contributors amassing more than 1500 points between them in the regular season. With a 19-7 regular season record and seniors DJ Johnson and Kyler Kluge leading the way, the Eagles advanced to the semifinal round of the state tournament, losing to eventual Class 4A champion Creighton Durham Hall. This is going to be a difficult matchup. We played Creighton the last game of the season and we beat them at St. Thomas. And so that was, I think, their first loss of the season. We really think that if we would have won that game, we would have had a great shot at winning the championship our sophomore year. No look. Oh! 
You know, obviously they had some talented players. Oturu just got drafted this year. Ryan Larson played a heck of a game against us. But seeing their players go on and have success in the collegiate ranks, I, it meant a lot that we were, you know, 15, 16 years old and out there, uh, you know, one possession away from beating those guys. Good rebound, Oturu! This is not just an old, archaic piece of history that we that we dust off once a year. Like, like Easter is a living, breathing message of hope. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ brought death to death. Your home for Minnesota high school sports is PrepSpotlight.tv. You can catch all the action live or on demand. Winter sports may look a little different this season, but School Space Media and PrepSpotlight.tv have adapted in order to continue bringing you the best high school sports coverage. Our new pay-per-view model allows us to stream more games so that you don't miss any of the action with the limited in-stadium attendance. Part of the revenue is given back to our school partners the Eden Prairie Boys Basketball Association is proud to help present the perfect season interrupted, the story of the 2019-20 Eagles 28-0 season. After a fourth place finish in the Class 4A state tournament, Eden Prairie knew it had the talent and significant playoff experience to make another run at this title game. Perhaps a sign of what was to come. During the 2018-19 season, the Eagles opened their season with a 10-point loss on a neutral territory to De La Salle. Right off the bat, you kind of saw what not having a leader like Kyler and not having a leader like DJ on the team was. And you could see that we were not ready for that. We needed to build that leadership. The Eagles went 17-9 with a three-game skid a month before section playoffs. The highs were really high and the lows were really low. Um, I think, you know, I remember beating Hopkins um, here at home on our floor and I remember losing to some teams we just, there's no way we should have lost to. And I think there was a little bit at the time of guys who were playing um, and thinking about college already. Everyone on the team kind of wanted theirs, wanted their points, wanted their boards, wanted their assists. That win against Hopkins, only the Royals' fourth loss, preceded a playoff run that would take down the number one seed. Prior Lake, and eventual McDonald's All-American Dawson Garcia on the Lakers home court. Dawson Garcia, who's one of my great buddies, we've known each other since sixth grade, texted me, um, we're gonna cut down your net in two weeks. And so they end up getting the first seed in the section. So two weeks later, we were at their place cutting down their nets. For the second season in a row, the Eagles earned a trip to Target Center. As a four seed in class 4A, they first faced five seed Lakeville North, a squad they beat earlier in the season. But the run would end in the first round. We ran into a brick wall and I think one of the big takeaways was we need to get stronger, we need to get tougher. It was a, it was a wake up call in my opinion. It started the next day I'm thinking about the next year. What do we need to do to uh, win it all next year? We need to improve our leadership we need to improve our overall toughness and we get, need to make sure that we are selfless. We can't any longer have one foot playing here and one foot playing for our college. There was no selfishness, no one cared who scored what, who got the accolades or anything like that. So I think that allowed, like you said, the magic to come in and I mean, we just got it rolling. Our first game was against Creighton Durham Hall. When these guys were sophomores in the state semifinal, and we had Drake had the shot to uh, tie it and send it into overtime. When he missed, they got the rebound. There's 0.8 left. They had one of their players come to our bench and say, enjoy your trip back to Eden Prairie, losers. This year is different with Creighton in the first game. So when I saw that come out, I'm like, all right, we're playing that first game like it's a playoff game. I think my first shot of the year, I think I shot off the top of the shot clock. We were behind for a good chunk of the game but we won with our toughness and our grit. Senior year is just kind of a, a new sense of reality, like it's the last time I'm gonna be able to put on this uniform and you know play with my best friends out here. I remember sitting right over here and watching Drake as a fifth grader making some plays that I hadn't seen any of our other fifth graders ever make. The Mr. Basketball candidate became the first eighth grader to make the boys basketball varsity squad 
and throughout his high school career became the school's all-time leader in scoring and in assists. If there's a poster boy for Eden Prairie basketball, it's probably Drake Dobbs. I mean, he's the best player that's ever gone through our program, no question. He is going to take it at you every single play. He's the most explosive player that I've ever coached. His shiftiness and ability to get to the rim was amazing. The kid never got tired, and it wasn't because he didn't play hard or save his energy. He just literally never gets tired. Got it! Eastview and Eden Prairie, two undefeated teams matching up here tonight. Four games later, another top 10 showdown with Eastview. Connor and Austin, they just, you know, they let us. That was, that was the thing about our team, though. Like, it wasn't just one guy who was going to, you know, help us win. We had so many different dudes, so like, on a daily basis, you know, that, would, that could perform at such a high level. The one player that was you know, a huge X factor. How is Will Foster going to perform? And we were up one and he hit a wing three to put us up four with like a minute and a half left. And that was so significant. Foster answers for Eden Prairie. You know, he was strong, physical, had a defensive mentality. And then offensively, he was good too. Like we could get him the ball and he could, you know, create a shot for himself, get inside, some spin moves. He's a fighter. Some games he would score two points, some games he would score 15 points, and he didn't care. All he wanted to do was win. What made us so dangerous was all five of us could score at any time. And so he really added that component to our offense. Nearly seven months prior, Will lost his dad, Ted Foster, who usually biked to work and was active, described as a lifelong athlete. Ted suffered a heart attack. The lessons that he taught me in my 16 years, I feel really fortunate to have. And we, we had a really special bond when it came to being uh, a dad and a son, but also he was one of my closest friends. At his funeral, his daughter talked about two specific things that Ted always talked about. You have two choices. You can be a gallant warrior, or a victim. The gallant warrior is one that looks at challenges and I'm going to overcome those. Not only am I going to overcome those, I'm going to take others with me and we made reference back to that during the course of the season. We use that, you know, as motivation like, hey man, like this is super sad. Like we rallied around, we rallied around him and he was able to, you know, you know, excel. The Eden Prairie Boys Basketball Association is proud to help present the perfect season interrupted, the story of the 2019-20 Eagles 28-0 season. Two months into the season, Eden Prairie built a 17-game undefeated streak. Look, look underneath by Dobbs, wide open. They dethroned the defending Class 4A state champion Hopkins Royals in an 82-68 road win and sinking preseason number one Park Center by a similar margin. Up next, a trip to Minneapolis and the island. My second favorite game of the year. The atmosphere on the island is different than any, any gym that you play in. They had some good players, but you know, Coach Flom had a, had a great defensive scheme. I think we held them to like 40 some points. You know, our chemistry you know, was great. Connor was just a beast. Connor can guard a point guard, and Connor could guard a post, and then of course anything in between. So he could guard every position, so we could put him on the other team's best player, regardless of what position they were. All the way down the floor and getting it to go. I would describe him as just an animal, like a fireball. Like he, he came in and when some of us were dead at practice, he would come in and fire us up and get us ready to go. And he always had such a high motor intensity, super smart player. I would say he was the guy that showed the most emotion out of all of us, and that kind of set the tone for the rest of us. Thought about the three, pulls it back, then takes it and knocks it down. John is now looking back, one of the most unique players I've probably have ever coached. 
He's one of the most unique individuals I've ever been around. He's very independent. He's a free thinker. He has this great spirit about him and um, he brings a lot of joy to a lot of people. He waffled with the idea of hanging things up after the first couple practices. After we had some tough practices, we're very thankful, John, that you didn't. And John and I had a little agreement that if you practice as hard as you can and play as hard as you can in games, we won't practice more than an hour and 15 minutes the rest of the year. Uh, he did that then, so we literally didn't practice more than an hour and 15 minutes the rest of the season after January. That was a big part of our success then um, with our energy level for games because we didn't get wore down. At Cambridge Asante, it was supposed to be Henry Abraham's night, a member of the 3,000 point club and 10th in points scored in Minnesota boys high school basketball history. Instead, John Henry lit up the Blue Jackets for 32 points, handing them their second loss and setting the school record for most triples in a game. Uh, his senior year, he shot over 51%. From January 1st to the end of the year, he shot 63% from the three-point line, and that isn't like he was shooting, you know, two for three each game. Jake Sullivan, who is uh, one of our assistant coaches, um, one of the all-time leading scorers in Minnesota history, I think people would argue one of the best advantage. shooters ever. He's talking during games like, I've never seen anybody shoot like this, this long, this consistency at any level ever. And Henry knocks down the three. Tuesday, February 18th. Eden Prairie now sat with a 23-0 record, just three games left in the regular season, and a star-studded number one Class 3A Minnehaha Academy hoped to play spoiler on perfection. The Eagles would need to shut down the state's number one recruit turned Gonzaga star, Jalen Suggs, as well as this year's top prospect, nationwide seven-footer Chet Holmgren. I've watched that game probably 20 times, 25 times now. 4.30, the bus got there, and it's like already full for the sophomore game. The first eight, 10 minutes, they're a completely different team than any team I'd ever seen with how freaky athlete and how great they were. We knew they were gonna make runs, we know they're gonna highlight real dunks, but I think that was kind of the motto of the season was like, you know, we're gonna beat people over 40 minutes, not 20. You know, we're down at half by six, you know, struggled a little bit in the first half, and I felt really lucky, fortunate, that we were only down six right at halftime. It felt like we were down 20. We get into the locker room and Plum's talking, he's like, this is right where we want to be. We're in the exact spot that we need to be. So we come out of halftime and we just start rolling. John just went nuts that game. I think he hit seven threes. Um, you know, we were Ding up. Uh, Will Foster completely took Chet out of the game. It's funny, we have a little six foot, Six foot dual guard and some seven, seven one guy. We take our first lead with about four and a half minutes left. Will Foster comes down and makes a fake pass to the three point line and goes up and hits a floater over Chet Holmgren. And that put us ahead. <laughs> He's backpedaling and he gives a big. And it was, it was funny, it was, we talked about it for the rest of the season, just like how forceful that clap was. You know, we're all, we're all clapping at that point. You know, I think it was the only basket he scored, but. It just showed like he was fully invested you know, into his role. We got up 14 points in about a minute and a half after that. You know, we felt a little disrespected, I think, just because they were saying they were uh, the best team in Minnesota history and they, they had already lost twice. What do you think this win says about this team? I think this shows that we're the best team in Minnesota, without a question. January, maybe, early February. I'm out walking my dog, listening to a podcast called The Daily. That episode was about this pandemic, or not pandemic at the time, but this uh, virus in China. And I was walking and my heart took a little dip. I go home and tell my wife, I said, the only way we're not gonna win a state championship this year is if we don't get to finish because of this pandemic.
Your home for Minnesota high school sports is PrepSpotlight.tv. You can catch all the action live or on demand. Winter sports may look a little different this season, but School Space Media and PrepSpotlight.tv have adapted in order to continue bringing you the best high school sports coverage. Our new pay-per-view model allows us to stream more games so that you don't miss any of the action with the limited in-stadium attendance. Part of the revenue is given back to our school partners. The Eden Prairie Boys Basketball Association is proud to help present the perfect season interrupted, the story of the 2019-20 Eagles 28-0 season. With Minnehaha Academy behind them, Eden Prairie sealed their last two wins, cementing the perfect regular season just five games away from the state title game. I think one of the most important factors in our success for these guys their senior year was Austin Andrews' evolution. You know, as a freshman, Austin was a such a good post scorer, and you know, you kind of thought, this guy's gonna break every scoring record in the book. Austin Andrews. He cleaned everything up on defense for us. Um, when there was a mistake, uh, Austin was there. You know, he was blocking shots, taking charges. He did all the little things well, and uh, he was super consistent for us. You could play out of the pick and roll, and you could pop. He ran the floor. He was certainly athletic enough. Andrews again powers his way in. He was so valuable. He could guard multiple positions. And we had talked a little bit about like the prior lake and to defend Dawson Garcia. Almost impossible, but he did it. On Saturday, March 7th. The Eagles met Prior Lake once again in the section playoffs. The Lakers looking for payback for the 2019 knockout. They came out guns a blazing, but we matched it. Garcia ended up, I think, five for 22 from the floor. So Austin and Connor did a phenomenal job guarding him. They have six different guys. They made eight threes in the first half, and they're not that great a three-point shooting team. We're up 12. I remember going into it like, you know, four more games, four more games left, right? Um, I don't think anybody had any idea that that was going to be our last game we ever played. The section final now set for that Friday, but the tip-off between Eden Prairie and Shakopee would not happen. So I get informed Thursday morning that they're only going to allow 90 fans in per team, but the games will be able to be played. Then we find out you can play, but no fans. Then that morning, at about 10.30, I get the text from Connor Christensen in our group text, and it's John Malaya had posted, season's canceled. And Connor says, coach, is this real? I had never felt that way in my entire life. Like, you know, something you work for for four to five years, and that just, it's painful. Painful. You know, lose or win, at least you got to play it out. We didn't even get to play it out, which was probably the hardest part. I made the decision, let's, let's cut the nets down, celebrating our team. You guys competed and loved each other. We had an absolute blast. It was magical in every possible way. And then uh, we all went to Champs in eight and told stories. The parents were there, there was 90 people on the kids, and we just told stories that night of the season. And, um, and that's how it ended. Since 1913, a boys state basketball tournament has been played every year until 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic ended that streak. Although the Eagles didn't get the chance to crown their perfect season with a championship, their list of accomplishments solidifies their standing as one of the great teams in Minnesota history. The first boys basketball team to have four 1,000 point scores from the same class a top 10 ranking in the country from ESPN, and a National Coach of the Year award. Flom became the first Minnesota coach to receive the honor. It was very hard, but I think the bond that we grew was more than we could have asked for. It was the most enjoyable season of basketball I've ever had, for sure. I really wouldn't change one thing. You know, we, came, we came to practice every day wanting to get better and win that day. And, that's why we can live with what happened. It's not what anyone wanted, but we can live with the result because we have no regrets. This is as close as I've ever seen a basketball team achieve, a team that I've been a part of. And I, and I really think it was that attitude of, we've got to be tough, we've got to be together, um, we've got to be gritty, we've got to care about each other, we've got to play for each other. Um, that wins a lot of games and it, it, it captures imaginations.
we did get to experience the perfect season. We got to play 28 games. We got to play so many top 10 ranked teams and perform the way we did and the way that our boys showed love for each other and to inspire others that watched our teams play with how they played. And Henry knocks down the three. That's pretty awesome. An unfinished season may leave the door open for debate. Where does the Eden Prairie squad of 2019-2020 stand among the great teams in high school basketball history? Top national honors for both coach and team, milestones made, an undefeated season, a perfect season. One we'll be talking about for years to come.